Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. All right. We're going to be looking at who is Gog and Magog. We're going to look through the Hebrew records and the Hebrew language to identify who Gog and Magog actually is. Modern theology and world information says that Gog is Russia. But according to the scriptures in the Hebrew language, it is China. And that's what we're going to look at here today. So we have the book of Genesis chapter 10 verse 2. Because in Asia and Europe are the children of Japheth. Right? And it is important to identify who Gog and Magog is because in the prophecy of the end times they play a very important role according to Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 which we'll be looking at chapter 38 as well today of Ezekiel. So starting in Genesis chapter 10 verse 2. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog, and Madai and Javan, and Tubal and Meshach and Tyrus. All right, now we have Magog. If we look at the Hebrew word Magog, can we look at the definition for that word, please? Yes, it's H4031. All right, and what does it mean? It means, which one you want to The Brownsbury's. Brownsbury's, okay. Uh, the land of Gog. The land, so it's interesting, they define it as the land of Gog. In reality, the word itself, Magog, in Hebrew, it's very interesting because the word Gog is the word for mountain, according to the concordance, right? Can you go to the word Gog, please? Yeah. Gog. That's, Gog is... Um, Rapha. No, this is Rapha. Can you go to Gog? It should have been in the uh, that initial definition of Magog. Oh, okay. There we go. Right there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, H1463. Gog. Uh, so it means mountain. mountain. Right? Now, this is interesting because the word Magog doesn't literally mean land of Gog. It actually means of Gog. Because the word Mu is to be of, like the Moabites. The word is Moaba. It means of father because the woman had a, fa a child by her father. And the word Gog meaning mountain in the <laughs> Shrons Concordance is very interesting because in the Hebrew language, still to this day, the word for mountain is ugu, ugu. and even when describing height, something tall, <laughs> what's, the, what's the word for something tall? Ugu. 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 So you see, we still can understand, by Ahaya's grace, we still understand these words in Igbo language to this day. And it helps us identify who Gog actually is. The word Gog in Hebrew is Wugu, and Magog is Mugugu. And so it's of mountains. And the word Gog is mountains, Gugu. And it lets you know that region, that place where Gog is, is actually very mountainous right. just by the definition of his name. And can we go to Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1, please? The 1 to about 3, I think it is. Ezekiel 38, verse 1. And the word of Ahiah came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. And there we see, now we can see the land of Magog. He says, Set thy face against Gugu. <laughs> That's the land of Magog. Now, it's very interesting because when we look in the Hebrew records to see where this land of mountains is, it's going to describe China. Right. Because the name Wugu was interesting to identify that this place is mountainous. And when you look up where the longest mountain ranges are, the highest mountain ranges are, the highest mountains in the world, you will find that they are located in China. And the regions about China, which these regions about China, according to the Hebrew records and the allotments given to the sons of Noah, are actually 
still a part of Magog or Mugugu. You have like Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Burma, Laos, Cambodia, and Thailand. These are actually all allotted to Magog or Mugugu according to the allotment that was given to the sons of Noah. So it's always it's very interesting to see who people actually are and identify them according to the Hebrew records and the Hebrew language to get the true understanding. And we can look at that. If we go to the book of Jubilees, chapter 8, verse 8 to 12. Now keep in mind, you already have Gog, which means mountain. Right. Magog of mountains. Right. Right? Or even as they put in the concordance, land of God, which is land of mountains. Right. So it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be very easy to know who Magog is and where he is, because you gotta look for the mountains, right? Right. So Jubilees chapter eight, verse eight to twelve, and we're going here to see when Noah and his sons were given their lots, there was something very important. It was an angel that gave Noah the allotments. And it's important to see because the angel describes the places according to what he's seeing from above. Right. So it'll help in what we're getting into here. So Jubilees chapter 8, verse uh, 8 to 12, please. And in the sixth year thereof she bare him son, and she called his name Peleg. For in the days when he was born, the children of Noah began to divide the earth among themselves. For this reason, he called his name Peleg. So here we see the Peleg. That's actually Polago or Pologo. is to, to spread out. This is uh, also in the Igbo Hebrew document. You can find the uh, understanding on his name as well. So this is when the sons of men were divided their lots in the earth. Okay, continue. And they divided it secretly amongst themselves and told it to Noah. Okay, so they already did their divisions, but they, they didn't get the true division until Noah gets right. involved there. Continue. And it came to pass in the beginning of the 33rd Jubilee that they divided the earth into three parts for Shem and Ham and Japheth. All right, so these are the three sons of Noah getting their lots. All right, Ham is what we know as Africa predominantly. Shem is what is known as the Middle East. Right. And Japheth is Europe and Asia. Right. According to the inheritance of each, in the first year and the first week, when one of us who had been sent was with them. That one of us is an angel. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So there's an angel giving them the allotments. All right. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh to him, they and their children, and he divided the earth into lots, which his three sons were to take in possession. And they reached forth their hands and took the writing out of the bosom of Noah, their father. All right. So everybody has their portion. We're going to look at Shem's portion because Shem and Japheth is right next to each other. And it's going to help us identify and confirm through the scriptures that Gog is actually the land of China. Because they, and I do this because there's a mountain range, the Himalayas and the Tian Shan. You see my hands go because it, it's literally the mountains are curved. Right around it, the land. Right, right around the land. Right. It's all mountains, so it's just a base to show you exactly <laughs> where it is. Just going by what I have out with Dana, what he put in his word, he's so gracious to show us clearly what is so that we don't have any confusion because he is not the author of confusion. That's right. All right, continue. Verse 12. And there came forth on the writing of Shem's lot, the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons. For the generation of eternity. All right. From the middle of the mountain range of Rapha. Now the middle of the mountain range of Rapha. This word Rapha is Rofa. It means to be big, to be vigorous, to be a giant. If you can read that definition. Yeah, that's what, Please. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Rofa. It's H7497. Can I get the Strong's definition, please? Definitely. From um, in the sense of invigorating a giant. A giant. So we have from the language alone, we have these identifications. We have Wugu, right. mountains. Mugugu of mountains. Or they as going by what the concordance said, land of mountains. And then you have Rofa, which means giant. Right. So these must be giant, giant mountains, mountains. <laughs> where this where Shem's lot starts now. So Shem's lot starts from the middle of that 
And we're going to read and see what direction is Sem going. That's and it's mean. interesting because where is the highest mountain in the world? Mount Everest. That's right. In the Himalayas. In China. <laughs> and right. when we look at the statistics, because we have some information from the World Atlas, all the biggest mountains, about seven. about seven of the ten biggest mountains are over in the area of China. Yes. The longest mountain range there in China. It's, it's amazing. That is just sitting right there in the records this whole time. All right, let's continue reading, Shem. From the middle of the mountain range of Rafa. So there, it's from the middle of the Himalayas. And what's interesting, what's in the middle of the Himalayas? The Ganges River. That's right. And this is an important mark because they're going to mention it to show where Shem Lot is divided. Right. And all Shem's Lot is to the west of the Ganges River. What is known as the Ganges River today in the scriptures is called the River Tina. I'm going to read about it here. That's right. From the mouth of the water, from the river Tina. From the mouth of the water. water. And this is amazing. Uh, I showed us. Right. <laughs> when you're looking from above at the map, where the Ganges River goes into the, what is called the Sea of Bengal, today it literally looks like teeth right. pointing down. So when it, it's showing the mouth of the river, the angel was above it looking down and describing what you could see from above. So it's amazing, and it's also confirmation that this is right. these things are powerful. These records are powerful. These were given to our fathers by the hands of angels. That's right. This is amazing. But there's no way anybody could see up from that that perspective. You could not, right. and especially because Noah, when they got that lot, they were over in the mountains of Ararat. Right. You on that them. side of the you <laughs> over over in the range of what's called Turkey today. You they couldn't see you over by the end of the Ganges River to know that. Well, the, it said it in the scriptures that one of us that was sent, it was an angel that gave them their allotment. All right. So we have the Ganges River. When you see the Ganges River, it goes from the middle of the Himalayas and it pours out and goes around the backside of India. And then you see the teeth of it going into the Sea of Bengal, which is in the scriptures called the Sea of Ma'at. Sure. That's amazing. From the mouth of the water from the river Tina, and his portion goes toward the west through the midst of this river. Now, that's amazing. When you go toward the west, you have India, what is known as Iran, and go all the way over to Africa, where you stop at uh, what is called the Sinai Peninsula, which is actually, according to the Hebrew records in the Book of Jubilees, was originally called Karaso. And it actually looks like a tongue. When you look at the Sinai Peninsula, it looks right. literally like a tongue, and that's what the angel described it as, a tongue, because right. he was high enough above to see exactly what it looked like. All right? Continue. Uh, okay. And his portion goes toward the west through the midst of this river, mm -hmm. and it extends till it reaches the water of the abyss, out of which this river goes forth and pours its waters into the sea, Miat. Sea, Miat, that's the Sea of Bengal, right? And this river flows into the Great Sea. And that Miat goes into the Great Sea, what is known today as the Indian Ocean. Right. And all this is towards the north for Japheth. And all that is toward the south belongs to Shem. So all that is toward the north of the mountains of Rapha, which is the Himalayas, is Japheth. Right. And all that is to the north of the Ganges River, going over, is Japheth. And all that is to the south is Shem. Right. So you can see, and when you look, if you get on Google and you look up, see what these nations look like, when you see the people of Bangladesh, Cambodia, and whatnot, and then you look at the people of India, they don't look the same right. because those are two different nations. The Indians are Shemites. Right. And those people of the opposite side of the Himalayas and opposite side of the Ganges are actually the children of Magog, the children of Japheth. Right. So it's amazing to learn about this, to Fahaya to reveal it unto us that his church will be edified to know what's actually coming in the times to come with these nations and the prophecies. So, was that verse 12? That was. All right. Jump to, so we saw, we, we read that it said uh, Japheth is to the north, right? Now, jump to Jubilees chapter 8, verse 25, please. All right. Jubilees chapter 8, verse 25. And for Japheth came forth the third portion beyond the river Tina. To the beyond north. the river Tina. So, what we know is today is Ganges, beyond the river Ganges, right? right? To the north of the outflow of its waters. To the north of the outflow of its waters. 
I mean, even if you go all the way up north of the Ganges, that's going to take you up to the Himalayas. So the north of the Alpha still brings you into China. It's like we can't escape it. <laughs> it is what it is. Continue. And it extends northeasterly to the whole region of Gog. Northeasterly to the whole region of Gog. Put it in Hebrew, northeasterly to the whole region of mountains. <laughs> so it's above the mountains. Right. Continue. And to all the country east thereof. All the country east thereof. And as you know, China is at the end. So all that over that way, that's all originally the land of Japhet. This is originally where the children of Japhet went, specifically the children of Magog. All the region of Gog, the land of mountains. All right? Yes. And let's jump to chapter 9, verse uh, 7 and 8. Chapter 9, verse 7. And Japheth also divided the land of his inheritance among his sons. Mm -hmm. And the first portion came forth for Gomer, to the east from the north side of the river Tina. And in the north there came forth for Magog, all the inner portions of the north until it reaches to the sea of Miat. So you have Gog to the north of the river Tina. So Gog goes up and out. And then over to the northeasterly inner portion is Magog's to the Sea of Ma'at. Right. That's from the Sea of Bengal going all the way, curling around through Cambodia and Thailand and coming up on the backside of China. This is all the region of Magog. According to the scriptures, Mugwugu, the land of mountains, Idezi Mugwugu, according to what it said in uh, Ezekiel 38 and 2. This is amazing that it's sitting right there. And we have the scriptures, and now we can confirm it with what the evidence that's actually in the earth. All right. All right? This is from the uh, worldatlas.com. It says, Asia, located in the northeastern hemisphere, the continent is divided into 48 countries. Geographically, it is home to some of the world's tallest mountains and longest ranges, as explained in this article. Now, when you look up the longest mountain ranges... This is the top seven mountain ranges in the world. You have the Kunlun Mountains. This is in China. You have the Tian Shan. This is in China. And Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. But still, <laughs> it, it flows into Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. But it's in China as well. Right. Then you have the Ural Mountains. Which is further up north into uh, where Russia is. And remember, Goma. It said Goma went up north. And then you have the Himalaya Mountains, which includes China as well, with Nepal, Bhutan, and then it even flows into India and Pakistan some. But we know that it says Shem right. had his portion from the middle of the mountain. What we have is, notice everything, China is included in the, what is it, four, I mean, six of the top seven mountains in the world. Then you have the lower Himalayan, which, now it's interesting, the Himalayan is still a part of the region of Magog. They put the number five uh, tallest, longest mountain range, uh, is called the lower Himalayan range today, which is India, Nepal, and Bhutan. And we know Nepal and Bhutan is actually a part of the land of Magog, according to the Book of Jubilees. And then the Sea Walik range, that contains Nepal and Bhutan. And then the Atli Mountains, which contains its Russia, China, Mongolia, and Kazakhstan. So the longest mountain ranges, the region of Gog, according to the scriptures, they're, they're contained in that area. And then you have the world's tallest mountain ranges, which is still in the same area, essentially. You have the Himalayas, is the number one tallest mountain range. This is in China, the Karakoram. Is the second, which is still in Central Asia, in the China area. The Hindu Kush Mountains, that's in India. That's over there. In, um, actually, the Hindu Kush is a part of the Himalayan region. So right. it still all ties in. And we, and we confirmed from the scriptures that Shem had his part from the middle of the Himalayas. Then you have the Pamirs, which the Pamirs Mountains, this is over in the area of China. And then you have the Heng Duan Mountains, which is in southwest China. <laughs> the Tian Shan, that's in China. Right. The Kunlun, that's in China. The Nyingcheng Tangle, 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I apologize, brothers and sisters from the land of Japhet. I do not know the languages of China. Right. I'm giving Try it. Sincerity. Try it so that people can understand. Sincerity. I'm doing it the best I can. The Ning Ning Ching Tanga. That sounded pretty good. Ning Ching yeah. Tanga. The Ning Ning Ching Tanga. You took a Mandarin class? No. No. Oh. So the Ning Cheng Tangla, that's in the regions of China. And now, even when you look at the largest mountains in the world, you have Mount Everest, China, the K2, that's on the border of China, the Kyang Cheng Junga, that's in between Nepal and India, and we know Nepal is a part of the land of Magog. The Lots is the fourth largest, and it is in the where is this one at? This is uh, right by Mount Everest, so that's over in the China region. The, Ma the Makalu, this is also in China. This is where Tibet and Nepal meet. And then the Cho Oyu, the sixth tallest mountain. This is in the Himalayan range between China and Nepal. And then the Dalagiri, it's the seventh largest mountain. This is also this one. I apologize, these are some words I cannot pronounce. And then you have the the eighth largest mountain is the Manals, Manaslu, which is the world's eighth largest mountains in, in the Himalayas. And the Nanga Parbat, this is found in Pakistan and is a western section of the Himalayas. So that comes that goes into Shem's portion. Sure. And the Anaparn Anna Purna, which is in Nepal, which is in the land of Magog as well. So, some it's uh, is so gracious that it's so simple right. for us to understand what it is. You have the greatest mountain ranges, the longest mountain ranges, most of the tallest mountains in the world sitting in the land of mountains, according to the Hebrew language and records. The land of Magog, or Mugugu, or Gugu. So, China is actually Gog, and the land of Magog. And they are the ones that is being spoken of in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38 and 39. Alright. Shalom. <laughs>